Hello and welcome to my channel Pharmacy in Depth where we will talk about pharmacy related topics in detail. Today we will talk about diabetes mellitus commonly known as diabetes. We will see different types of diabetes and what are the various drugs used for treatment of diabetes mellitus. So diabetes mellitus or diabetes is a chronic disease characterized by high blood glucose level which can result from inadequate insulin production or resistance of body cells to the action of insulin. Whenever we eat any food, upon its digestion, carbohydrate molecules are broken down into glucose molecules, which are then absorbed by the blood vessel and is transported throughout the body. Now let's see what happens when this blood glucose level increases or decreases from a certain concentration. So when there is high blood sugar level, beta cells of pancreas secretes a hormone called insulin in the blood vessel which stimulates the uptake of glucose from the blood by other cells of the body. It also stimulates glycogen formation. So glucose is stored in form of glycogen in the liver and this conversion is stimulated by the action of insulin and as a result of which the blood glucose level decreases. Similarly, when there is low blood sugar level, alpha cells of the pancreas secretes a hormone called glucagon which stimulates glycogen breakdown. That means more amount of glycogen is being converted into glucose, which at the end increases the blood sugar level. Now let's see how insulin interacts with its receptor on the cell surface. So in the blood we have blood cells, we have glucose molecules and we have insulin molecules secreted by the beta cells. Insulin receptor is a tetrameric tyrosine kinase linked receptor present on the cell surface. It has two alpha units and two beta units. When insulin molecule binds to the alpha subunit, it activates beta unit and leads to phosphorylation of the tyrosine kinase enzyme and activates it. After a cascade of pathways, it opens up a glucose transporter channel on the cell surface. This channel is known as GLUT4 channel. With help of this channel, glucose molecule enters the cell. Now let's see different types of diabetes mellitus. In a healthy individual, beta cells of pancreas secretes insulin molecule. This insulin molecule binds to its receptor on cell surface and opens up GLUT4 channel. This GLUT4 channel helps glucose molecules to move inside the cell. In type 1 diabetes mellitus, beta cells of pancreas fail to produce insulin because of an autoimmune disorder in which the immune cell of the body start attacking the beta cell and disrupts them. In type 2 diabetes mellitus, Beta cells produces enough insulin, but body cells fail to respond to that insulin properly. Something goes wrong with the insulin receptor binding or with the opening of GLUT4 transporter, as a result of which glucose does not enter the cell. Type 1 diabetes is also called insulin dependent diabetes mellitus, juvenile diabetes, or childhood diabetes, as it usually occurs in young children and teens. And out of 5 to 10 percent of all the cases of diabetes are type 1. Type 2 diabetes is known as non-insulin dependent diabetes mellitus or adult onset diabetes as most of the cases occur at more than 40 years of age and 90% of all the cases of diabetes are type 2. Apart from these two chronic diabetic conditions, there is one more diabetes called the gestational diabetes in which the blood sugar level of the mother is high during pregnancy but usually disappears after giving birth. Now let's see the treatment of diabetes mellitus. First is type 1 diabetes which is insulin dependent diabetes mellitus. In this beta cells fails to produce insulin so we have to take insulin externally and there are 4 main type of insulin preparation available in the market. Depending upon their onset and duration of action they are classified as rapidly acting insulin, short acting, intermediate acting and long acting insulin analogs. Examples of long-acting insulins are Glargin, Detimir, and Diglutec, and rapidly acting insulins are Espart, Lispro and Glulicin. Since insulin is a peptide molecule, it cannot be taken orally as it will get degraded in the GI tract. Hence, these insulin analogs are taken subcutaneously or intramuscularly. Now let's see the treatment of type 2 diabetes mellitus, which is insulin-independent diabetes mellitus. So all these agents can be taken orally and are divided into three main classes. The first one enhances insulin secretion. In this we have sulfonylureas, maglutinides 
and dipeptidyl peptidase 4 inhibitors. Second category of drug overcomes insulin resistance. In this we have bigonides and thiazolidine dions. And third category is miscellaneous in which we have alpha glucosidase inhibitors, amylin analog, dopamine D2 agonists and SGLT2 inhibitors. Now let's see the mechanism of each class in detail. This is the mechanism of action of sulfonylureas and maglutinides. In beta cells, upon glucose metabolism, ATP is released which is used to open ATP sensitive potassium channel and potassium ion moves out of the cell. These two classes of drug blocks this ion channel as a result of which the potassium ion concentration increases inside the cell which leads to depolarization and opening of calcium ions. The calcium ions moves intracellularly and causes the secretion of insulin molecule. Next is the mechanism of action of DPP4 inhibitors. So when we eat any food, in small intestine upon its digestion, incretins or glucose-like peptide 1 are produced which stimulates insulin secretion and inhibits glucagon secretion. But these GLP molecules are broken down into inactive peptides by enzyme DPP. So these DPP4 inhibitors blocks this enzyme so that incretins or GLP1 cannot be broken down and increases insulin secretion. Alternatively, these GLP1 analogs are also given as drug which are liraglutide, exenatide, dulaglutide, lbglutide, lixisenatide and semaglutide. Then we have mechanism of action of biogonides. In this we have only one drug, metformin. It reduces free fatty acids. In muscle, it increases glucose uptake and promotes glycogenesis. It reduces fatty acid oxidation. It increases anaerobic glucose metabolism and reduces free fatty acids. And in liver, it decreases glucogenesis and glyconeogenesis and free fatty oxidation. And as a result, it reduces the blood glucose level. Next, we have mechanism of action of thiazolidine dions. In this, we have drugs pioglitazone and rosiglitazone which selectively binds to PPAR gamma receptor intracellularly in the nucleus of the cell. Binding of these drugs to this receptor increases glucose transporter synthesis into muscle and adipose tissue. It inhibits hepatic gluconeogenesis and promotes lipogenesis. As a result, it reduces blood glucose level. Next is the mechanism of action of alpha-glucosidase inhibitors. So, oligosaccharides are broken down into monosaccharides that is glucose with help of this enzyme which are then absorbed into the blood leading to postparental hyperglycemia. So these inhibitors blocks this enzyme and inhibits the breakdown of oligosaccharides into glucose molecule. Drugs that belong to this category are acarbose, miglitol and voglibose. And at last we have mechanism of action of SGLT2 inhibitors. So glucose is filtered through glomerulus and reaches PCT where around 70% of glucose is reabsorbed into the blood via SGLT2 transporter which is sodium glucose co-transporter. So these molecules inhibit this transporter so that glucose is not reabsorbed into the blood and majority of it is excreted through urine. Drugs that belongs to this category are dapagliflozin, empagliflozin, canagliflozin and ertogliflozin. So guys this was all about diabetes mellitus. Thanks for watching the video. I really hope you liked it and if you did, like it, share it and subscribe to my channel.